Okay, all right, we're back. We're live, I'm Jay Fidel. This is uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Um, and my co-host today, Mitch uh, Ewan, ordinarily the host of this show. And we have not one, not two, but three guests uh, from Hawaiian Electric today to give you the news, three elements of news from Hawaiian Electric. Uh, Shannon Tangunan, Sandy Tabata, and uh, Ellie Flores, Effie Flores. Thank you very much for coming around, ladies. Um, and now we're going to have Mitch describe uh, what we're going to do here today. Ready? Go. Ready, set, go. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about um, disconnection, uh, the disconnection moratorium, which has been on for a long time. So Shannon's going to give us an update on that and uh, what uh, the latest developments in that program. And then Effie, uh, she uh, won the prize for helping with the uh, Aloha United Way this, this year at Hawaiian Electric. So she's going to talk to us all about the Hawaiian Electric A Aloha United Way program. And then finally, last but not least, Tani's going to talk to us about the electrification of transportation, in particular buses and charging stations. So welcome to the show again, ladies, uh, from my part. So uh, Shannon, uh, are we starting off with you? Yes, yes we are. So uh, Shannon, we've been talking on and off with One Electric about the uh, you know, the moratorium uh, on disconnect uh, over the past year and a half already. And now we're in another phase of it. And so can you give us the background? Can you tell us what's happening? Sure. Um, we've been in a disconnection moratorium um, really for over a year. So it ended on May 31st. And so we're entering a different phase. We've, um, throughout the pandemic, we've asked customers you know, if you're having um, difficulty paying, if you have a past due balance, to really um, reach out to us um, so that we can help. And what we've done is offer several different payment plans, um, payment arrangement plans for customers um, to really spread out their payments and make it a little more um, palatable, you know, every, every month pay an installment. So we're, we're in a phase now where we have about 21,000 customers on payment plans. Um, and it ranges uh, from four months to 18 months. Um, most recently in, in July, what we have is um, we've automatically enrolled customers. So there are gonna be probably about 16,000 customers, the majority of them residential customers who will see installment payments, I mean, installments on their bill um, because we've automatically enrolled them into a 12 month payment plan. And so in doing so, we're helping them avoid the collection process. And, and we're hoping this, you know, allows them more time to, you know, bring their accounts um, up, you know, actually, you know, to get rid of the past two balance. Mm -hmm. uh, what we want them to do is, you know, if even the 12 month plan does not work for them, we have an 18 month plan. So even if you're on the 12 month, you can call us or you can um, send us a, a form, submit a form online, and you can basically ask for more time. So even, you know, six more months than you have now. So that makes it a little more manageable for many folks. And it's that 18 month plan is now available for both residential customers and small commercial customers, which are on um, schedule G, schedule G rate customers, sorry. Yeah, oh, that's great. Um, you know, I think that it, it actually works in all directions. It's a win, win, win. Because if, if you know, if the people are mm, like they're in the headlights, you know what I mean? They're, and they're nervous, yeah. they don't know what to do, they're afraid. Yeah. Um, and so they go uh, hide somewhere. And that's not a good not approach for them. It's not a good approach for them. And it's certainly not a good approach for you. You want, no. to, re you want to rebuild those relationships. Uh, definitely. We definitely want all our customers to stay connected. So this um, automatic enrollment is, you know, really part of our, our planning throughout the pandemic. You know, how will we keep customers connected even after the moratorium ends? And so this is, you know, part of our long-term planning, um, our way to just keep customers connected. And even if, you know, 
even if you're having a difficult time with the, the payments themselves, the installments, we don't want you to just not contact us, you know, and just, you know, try to wait it out. That's not going to help. The best thing you can do is to contact us um, and, you know, reestablish a different, you know, type of plan, um, you know, we'll work with you to make sure that we have you on a plan that works for your family, for your household, for your business. Yeah, and what I heard you say was if a given plan, say, uh, <clears throat> say a six month plan, I'm making that up, uh, doesn't work and the individual, uh, you know, uh, consumer comes to you and says, look, I need more time, you'll, you'll negotiate with that person and so it won't be, um, you know, a brick wall at the end of six months. No, definitely not. We're definitely hoping our customers will reach out to us either online through the app, call us. We're here to, to work with them to get through this, you know, any kind of difficulty you might have. Um, really, it's, it's all about communicating. And if you communicate to us that, you know, there are issues and they wanted to make a switch, you know, we can do that. We can work with our customers. So we just want to make sure everyone is aware that there are options out there. Um, don't feel like, you know, nothing can be done because there is something that can be done and we want to keep everyone connected. Yeah, very important. I mean, there's nobody in, in the state really that doesn't need electricity at home. You can't really live without it. So you really have to have, you have to be at least on some terms with the electric company. Um, and furthermore, um, it seems to me that, you know, the, the implicit in this is that if they don't want to come in, if they don't want to talk to you, they do risk getting disconnected. They do risk that. It's a possibility, no? Yes. You know, eventually, if you don't make any attempt to pay, if you don't attempt to call us, you know, then at some point there will be, you know, disconnection notices coming. And we don't, we want to avoid that. You know, we want everyone to just be able to, you know, make payments that work for them and just make sure that all our customers are feeling like they can contact us if they are having, you know, any kind of issues, um, financial difficulties. You know, we definitely want to be a partner. That's great. It's great. It's a, it's a what do you want to call it? it? It's more than just connecting with, um, you know, their their electric electrical supply. It's yeah. connecting in other ways, you know, to be remembered. A little kindness goes a long way. That's what I say. Yeah. Well, this is it. So it's a double entendre is what it is. Yeah. Um, OK, hang around because we're okay. going to go down the row here and uh, we can all kibitz together. So uh, Effie, you're second. And uh, Mitch is going to ask you some very incisive questions about the uh, Aloha United Way program. Go ahead, Mitch. Well, here's a very insightful question. Tell us all about the AUW plan for Hawaiian Electric, Effie. What, what, what's it all involved? And, uh, you know, how are you implementing it? Sure. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. Um, so. The um, AUW campaign this year tried to um, find some fresh and innovative ways to raise funds for AUW. And thinking outside the box, we thought we wanted to uh, work with a local vendor, uh, an organization with like my, uh, that's like-minded and share the same values um, to raise funds for AUW. And we reached out to Manola. And they, thankfully, they're so gracious and um, uh, welcoming in, in joining forces to help with this effort. So we are running a, a one month long sale of the Lei Pua Kene Kene um, collection, which is the first um, uh, body and uh, bath and body line uh, product from Manola. And um, this can be purchased uh, or pre-ordered through uh, the website. Uh, if you go into www.manaola.com forward slash AUW, you'll find all the information there. It will get you to uh, the link where you can pre-order the merchandise. And um, 
the proceeds for this um, for the sale will go to Alice Fund um, for AUW. Alice stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained um, Employed. So these now, are my wife and I speak a little else at dinner. She can she can recite that. As a matter of fact, she can recite it to music. Will you give us the acronym one more time, Abby? Alice. Yeah, standing for? Alice. It stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. So these are um, the population who are hardworking folks of um, Hawaii that um, have a limited income, who has a very uh, difficult times making ends meet, um, may have two to three jobs, and um, may have, you know, if they have an emergency, they don't have uh, a pocket or an extra money to go into. So AUW helps those folks um, to get by. And pre-pandemic, um, it was the uh, Alice um, population was about 42%. Post-pandemic, um, it's went up to 59%, according to Emily, uh, Emily the, um, from AUW. So getting together um, cross in this industry to, to uh, get into um, helping the community and supporting it through this sale would be great. So um, the sale again is through, um, from now till end of July and will be delivered during uh, around fall time in October. What's the role of Hawaiian Electric in this? Uh, sure. Just explain how that works. Sure. So um, Manola is the, uh, the brain of what the product would be. We had a couple of brainstorming sessions with them on how we can um, get this implemented. So they came up with a product and then we had um, uh, Hawaiian Electric uh, help decide what pr those products would be that would be um, uh, also aligned with our company uh, policies and what we stand for. So this products are um, uh, ethically and sustainable, sustainable products um, and Hawaiian Electric also is help, helping with the publicity uh, of this um, effort. So, yeah, answer and your question. How do they do that? <laughs> is there a little, uh, coupon in your electrical bill, or how does that? What, what are the nuts and bolts of the publicity campaign? How do you get the word out? Apart from think tech, um, sure. Our corporate communication um, team has been working great with. Uh, pub, uh, I think they've send it out um, through different publishers and local ads. Um, and maybe Shannon may know about that as well. Um, but our, our, our main contact, Sharon Higa, has been awesome in sending us out through um, ads from what okay. I know. So theoretically, you know, these uh, people, uh, Alice uh, people, I'll call it that, um, if they can't pay their electrical bill, then then a program like this could maybe help them if they're in dire straits, correct? Yeah. And what have you got to add so to they, that? They have, the, sorry, what was that? I was asking Shannon if she had anything to add to that. No, well, I mean, all the proceeds um, of our efforts, you know, are, isn't basically a year long projects that we have um, to support AUW. So Hawaiian Electric for years, decades now have, has been a, a huge supporter of AUW. And so this, um, the Mauna Ola partnership, that's just one of many um, ways that we raise funds for AUW. And yes, um, the funds will eventually go to those who need it most. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, they can, use the, whatever proceeds they get um, through AEW or services they get, you know, that would just better their, um, their lives. And what we want to do at Hawaiian Electric 
um, also is to make sure though that Alice, um, the Alice population takes advantage of a lot of the programs that are out there. There's a lot of financial assistance and you can go to hawaiianelect.com slash COVID-19. And there are, there's a listing of all the different programs available there too. But definitely um, Effie and her team, um, you know, we, we definitely support their efforts to uh, raise funds for AEW. So it's really a, a company-wide effort. Yeah, we have to pull together these days, don't we? And good for Hawaiian Electric for doing that, for helping us pull together and recover from COVID because we haven't yet recovered. All of this is really about recovering from COVID. So let's go to you, Tandy. Um, you're, you're the technology person here today. You're talking about the, the e-bus. And I warn you now that Mitch Ewan is a bus man. Um, he, he's he heavily involved in buses. Some say that life for Mitch is just a busman's holiday. That's what they say. Anyway, why don't, why don't you tell us a story about e-bus? Sure, thanks, Jay. Um, you know, Hawaiian Electric is really excited that we received approval for a new program, um, which is a make ready program for electric buses. And you might be wondering what is make ready? Um, the intent of the program is really to simplify, you know, reduce the complexity and the cost of transitioning uh, bus fleets to electric. So of course, as, as you may imagine, you know, there's costs of buying new vehicles, buying charging stations, and then there's the whole side of charging infrastructure and getting power to your facility, planning that out, designing that out. Um, and this program allows Wine Electric to really take care of that big and technical component and allow bus operators to focus on their vehicles and the charging stations themselves. Um, so, you know, if you can kind of imagine you have power either, you know, overhead or underground um, nearby your facility and you're looking at putting in charging stations, you need to figure out how to get that power to your site. It may involve putting in a new transformer, you know, um, conduit and lines up to a new meter and then it goes into your facility and there's an electrical panel. And then after that, you install your charging station and then your bus can pull right up in charge. And so typically, you know, like without this program, a bus operator would have to think through a lot of that. You know, Hawaiian Electric, of course, would provide the, the transformer and, and the meter, but a lot of that thinking would fall on, on the shoulders of the, the bus operator. Through this program, you know, like in that image that you see, all the things in purple are things that Hawaiian Electric will, will now um, manage. You know, we will own and maintain that infrastructure for this pilot. Um, and then that green charging station is, is where the bus operator comes in. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things. So one is uh, Hawaiian Electric is doing this, is interested in doing it because it is selling the power to the bus. Am I right? We are. Yep. They were our, our customer. And um, what's, you know, we really want to help support transition to electric vehicles. Um, not only is it good for our environment, it helps our state achieve, you know, our, our clean energy goals. Um, but it also can help reduce the cost for bus operators. We've seen, you know, on charging with electricity can save on costs. You know, it can be cheaper than you know, refuel. Sure, sure. You know, these buses are expensive anyway. And if you can help, um, you know, avoid, um, you know, further investment by the owner of the bus, you, you're making it possible to have an electric bus even where there might not be one because of the, the investment required. Some of these new buses, for example, the city is buying, ho oh, ho, really expensive. But my question is, um, my question is, um, what kind of buses qualify? If I have a little wee little tiny bus, is that qualify? Or how about one of those double section buses that the, the city is getting? Does that qualify? And how about all the stuff in between? A good question, Jay. So um, the vehicles that are qualified for this program uh, are class five through eight buses. And so class five, it really goes by, you know, your vehicle weight. So that starts at 16,000 um, pounds. And then it goes up from there. So we're looking at class five and up. Those are typical, like a, a class five might be a shuttle bus. Um, and then upwards of that, that could include a school bus, a transit bus, you know, a motor coach. And this is on Oahu for now? 
This is actually um, on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii Island. Oh, wow. It's pretty yeah. ambitious wow. then. Well, it is. Okay. And it is, it is a pilot, so it's, it's limited for the next, you know, three years. And we anticipate, um, you know, up to about 10 sites. So right now we don't have approval to, to install it everywhere, but we're looking at potentially up to 10 sites and about two ports per site. You know, we'll have to see what, what applicants come in with and, and what those costs actually are. So you say approval, is that PUC approval? Yes, yeah, PUC approval. Um, you know, all our programs do go and get reviewed by the Public Utility Commission. So you're, you're testing the water for a couple of years uh, here. You want to see, uh, you know, what the market's like and what people want, what they need, how well you can satisfy whoever is driving one of those, was it class five to class eight buses, yeah? Um, now, I, I have to warn you, though, uh, Mitch has questions. I know he does. I can, I can see and remember that he is a bus man. He's definitely a bus man. Unfortunately, he's, he's more a hydrogen bus man than an electric bus man, but some people feel that hydrogen is electric anyway. Right, Mitch? Well, it's an electric bus by definition. We passed legislation to say an electric uh, hydrogen bus is the same as an electric vehicle. So I knew go. I knew he was going to say that. Stick that in. <laughs> so uh, what about cost recovery? I mean, this is not free. I mean, you, you, I mean, I can see the cost savings because Hawaiian Electric knows exactly what the uh, rules and regulations are and, it, and, and they, they have the experience behind them of putting in this kind of facility. So the, the operator doesn't have to go out and reinvent the wheel and figure it all out for the first time, whereas you guys have, well, have done it several times, at least 10 times in this pilot project. But at the same time, how do you recover? I mean, that still costs a lot of money. I mean, transformers and and uh, engineering and and putting in all the conduits that that's not cheap stuff. So, can one assume that that will be recovered in the rate that you still ch you charge for the electricity? There'll be a you know a little uh, something tacked on the bill to co cover the infrastructure. There will be you know cost recovery for it. Um, we were approved a certain amount, of course, for the pilot. So it's it's. A, a fixed amount that we have to work with um, and it will be you know cost recovered through existing mechanisms that we have um, but you know with buses the hope is that this can serve more than just you know an individual you know buses are used by so many people in our community um, you know across different age groups and you know just just different communities so it's, it's we're hopeful that this this is um, an investment that's going to benefit a lot of different folks and over a long period of time. So well, I'll tell you what it'll do. Uh, it'll, it'll incentivize people to buy electric buses. That's got to be a, a core, you know, a core goal here. If you're going to do this. You want to you want to bring more people into the electric bus community and have them bring electric buses here. So uh, they should, you know, feel that going forward, um, that these facilities will continue beyond the pilot period and that they will be available in more and more places like charging stations in general and they will buy electric buses and then we will have achieved a, a very important public goal for getting to our you know getting to our uh, targets uh, in 20 what is it what is it now? 2045 yeah. yep that's right sorry sorry Mitch you had something <clears throat> No, I was just going to say for every person you put in the bus, you're not putting them in a car. So you're saving. I mean, there is some CO2 generated and generating the electricity, but at the same time, people don't maintain their cars or whatever. So there's going to be a, you know, a considerable carbon uh, dioxide uh, savings by having people take the bus. And then you have an electric bus, which is silent and no exhaust fumes. People are going to start really liking, liking the bus. And so that will encourage more ridership, I'm sure. So this is a, a good, great program. And I'm, I'm looking forward to leveraging our hydrogen buses off of it as well. So there you go. Yep. There you go. I knew Mitch was going to say that. I kind of tipped you off, didn't I? I was okay. <laughs> Anything else you want to leave the public with, Tandy? Any message you want to give them now? No, I just you know wanted to mention as part of this program, we are also offering electric bus rates for anyone that participates in this program. 
and it incentivizes and encourages our bus operators to, of course, charge their buses during times that are, are beneficial to everyone, especially during the daytime when there's more renewable energy on the grid. Um, so that not that just makes you know the fueling of these vehicles even cleaner if they can charge during the daytime. Um, you see that kind of aqua color. That's the peak between five and ten p.m. That's when we don't want folks to charge. So that is why it's it's a price premium to charge during that time. But you know the other times of day are typically lower than what they would typically get under a commercial rate. Um, and so again, we're we're really hopeful that. Programs like this and coupled with rates, we're going to encourage behaviors that are overall good for our community as a whole. Uh, I, I hope, I'm, I'm sorry, Mitch, go ahead. I think that between five and 10, most of the buses are going to be on the road taking people home. So they're not going to be using your bus to charge during the peak rush hour and everything else like that. So it kind of works out fine, I would think. I hope you come back and talk to us some more as the benchmarks are realized uh, in the pilot program. Let us know how it looks and how it's going to look. I really appreciate you reporting to us on this, Tandy. Oh, thank you. So, uh, Effie, what kind of message would you like to leave with the public uh, about your program with the Aloha United Way? Um. So I uh, wanted to encourage everyone to support this effort. This is the first ever um, collaboration outside of uh, Hawaiian Electric and another um, organization to raise funds externally um, for AUW uh, for this year. Uh, as Shannon had mentioned, we had different other uh, events that raised funds, but uh, this is an exciting one. Um, it, I think this product is a great um, product for your friend Ohana and your friends and family locally and um, to your, uh, to the, uh, you can send to the mainland. Uh, this is out to be uh, delivered in the fall and um, that would be a great time for you to stack up for gifts for the holidays and um, I hope you support this effort. Um, again, the, uh, you can go into www.manola.com forward slash AUW. Or um, if you have any questions, you can send us an email at uh, 2021 fundraiser at hawaiianelectric.com. So um, I hope you guys um, support this. Uh, it benefits Alice. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, exciting product. Okay, the operative word is Alice. And the second operative word is Emily. Right. Emily is the um, the uh, the main person. Wait, let me just make sure I have this right. She is the VP, um, Emily Calibrero for uh, EW. Yeah, I remember that because Emily Emily is the name of my puppy, and my whole world revolves oh. around Emily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shannon, what what, what yeah. message do you want to leave with our with our viewing audience? This is a, this is an important news day for Hawaiian Electric. So let us know your thoughts. Well, we just definitely want our customers to know that we're here to work with them. So, you know, don't ever feel like you can't contact us because we have folks that can answer your calls. We have folks that can chat with you online. We have so many different ways for you to reach us. Um, and we really want to work with our customers to keep them connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Us. And Mitch, uh, this is, I, I hope you're not too nervous about this, Mitch, but this is your big opportunity to summarize the essence, you know, the abiding truth of this show. Go for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, don't ignore Hawaiian Electric. Pay your bill or at least talk to them. They're not the enemy. They're the friend <laughs> and treat them as a friend. So don't hide because that's not a good thing to do. That's, that's a dumb move. And uh, support the United Way. Uh, they help the people who need the help, and it's a really great program that uh, Hawaiian Electric is sponsoring. So well done. And also uh, on the bus side, the electrification of transportation, a great first start from Hawaiian Electric to ease into the shock of infrastructure for charging your electric buses, and it looks like a great program. So thank you very much, uh, Tandy and Effie and Shannon. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you all, you guys. Let's do it again soon. Aloha. Thank you, guys. 
Thank Bye. you.